Genetic testing is incredibly important in, for neuro-oncologists. Um, our patients tend to have genetic mutations in the tumor that really tell us a lot about what the underlying, um, uh, what the underlying tumor is, how it's going to behave. Sometimes it tells us how likely the patient is to respond to a certain type of therapy. And in other cases, it potentially offers an additional targeted therapy that opens a door to treatment that wouldn't be available for them otherwise. So genetic testing is a routine part of all of my patients for primary brain cancer, and I find it incredibly helpful and useful and important. I think that the role that our, that our ability to understand the genetics of tumors and the genetics of individuals that make them more or less susceptible plays an increasingly important role in our understanding of cancer and cancer risk and also in the choice of systemic therapies. And I think there are many targeted therapies or chemotherapies which my colleagues in medical oncology have been able to harness the power of genetic or genomic data to help make better choices. Since 2014, genetic testing um, suddenly became recognized by the experts in multiple myeloma as playing an important role in identifying patients with higher risk disease and not only identifying them, but also, also lately, um, maybe treatment should not be the same like with those who have standard risk based on their genetic testing. So genetic testing now became is part of the staging workup early on and also determines what should be done and what should we do later after the patient achieves remission? And what are the expectations with treatment? And patients need to know about those markers very early on with the diagnosis. So for advanced patients, we typically will do genetic testing on the makeup of the DNA that we're born with called germline DNA in virtually every case. In addition, we're increasingly using the genetics of the tumor and that can inform therapy and as we incorporate the genetics into our practice, it gives us a broader therapeutic set of options at times, not always, but at times. And genetics are really part of what we do today in terms of prostate cancer care. Part of the role of the clinician is to incorporate all the information that we can into offering the patient the right treatment. Um, when speaking with you about your uh, family history, oftentimes we'll ask about cancers that are uh, run in the family. And it might not be the same cancer as you have. If you have prostate cancer, we're gonna ask you whether or not your, brother, your mother's or sister's had breast cancer. Because they, despite them being different organs, the pathogenesis is the same. Incorporating this information allows you to offer patients the right treatment and um, prevent them from passing on genes that they don't want to. One of my sort of best stories here is I, ha I have a patient who was diagnosed with prostate cancer and he came to see me and we sat and we, we spoke for a while and we ended up taking out his prostate and he had very aggressive disease and needed additional treatment afterwards and and while we were going through the process I asked him well he's like ah, you know I, don't, I, I think I did I think that my my uncle had prostate cancer I said, all right so we got genetic testing on him and we found he had a very important gene mutation not only did he have a very important gene mutation but he had passed this on to his daughter. So his daughter, who is a 35-year-old uh, Stanford postgraduate researcher, went and got tested and found out that she had the gene too. And then not only that, she went and had her mammogram and they found a small breast malignancy. And so genetic testing isn't about treating the patient, it's about treating the family. It's about making sure that things get diagnosed early and in treatable stages so that we're not repeating the same mistakes that we've made in the past. Thank you.